Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown and AW Rampage review. SmackDown tonight was from the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana, while Rampage was taped from the Wintrust Arena in Chicago, Illinois. And SmackDown tonight, SmackDown was just fucking awful, in my opinion. It was absolutely boring. Nothing happened on this show tonight. It was a waste of two hours. And Vince McMahon made changes to the show tonight. But all in all, just SmackDown was just fucking awful. But tonight on the show, we saw LA Knight versus Rey Mysterio, which originally I heard it was supposed to be a triple threat. It was supposed to be Elliot Knight versus Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar, but that got canceled because that was one of Vince's changes made to the show. Apparently, I think Bailey and Shotzi were going to be on the show tonight. They weren't on it. We had the uh, Women's Tag Team Championship on the line and also the NXT uh, Women's Tag Team Championship to unify them. So we have Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. And we also saw Pretty Deadly, Pretty Cringe, Pretty Awful versus the Street Profits. Charlotte Flair was in action. She had taken on Lacey Evans. Man, it sounds like a good SmackDown we got tonight, right? And then the main event. We had Sheamus versus... Sol Sokoa. Oh no, what a waste of two hours this SmackDown was. Absolutely god-awful. But before I get into the review, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video that I uploaded earlier today, did a movie review of Phantom of the Paradise, so definitely check out my review of that. Very fun film from 1974. Really enjoyed it, loved it. So check it out. It's an underrated Brian De Palma film. And also went live uh, last night, the little Thursday night hangout. So check that out. The two-hour uh, stream. So definitely uh, give that a watch. It's a fun stream I did last night. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. SmackDown open up tonight with... The Usos, Jimmy and Jay, they end up coming out. They got a big pop from the crowd. You know, of course, last week, uh, the Usos ended up taking out uh, Roman Reigns. So the bloodline is now over. You know, it's just Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, and Sol Sokoa. So the fans end up Chen Usos. Jay got on the mic. And he ended up saying, the bloodline. And Jimmy ended up telling him to stop. Jay looked at Jimmy, and Jay ended up saying, the Usos are now in your city. Jimmy wants to say that he is feeling good. He ended up asking Jay how he was feeling. So we got a Usi chant from the crowd. Jay ended up saying that they are about to fight their family. Jay ended up saying that family doesn't do that. Family is supposed to lift each other up. Make sure from the bottom to the top that they have their backs. You want to say from day one to the end. Jimmy then cut Jay off. He ended up saying that it sounds to him like he made the absolute perfect choice. Jay ended up saying that they still love the tribal chief Roman Reigns. They still love him too. He ended up saying that he is the tribal chief. For three years, they were in the trenches together. And he ended up saying that they did what he asked them to do, what Roman asked them to do. He ended up saying where Roman messed up is that he disrespected the both of them. Jay ended up saying that they were raised on respect, and that is huge. Jimmy then went on to say that it's not about falling in line but they fell in line. 
him and Jay fell in line, and they became the most dominant faction in WWE. But then they got disrespected. Jimmy ended up saying that Roman is now on the island of relevancy alone. He then ended up saying that they can't forgive the ones outside of the house. He ended up saying if you follow it, rats, they will lead to snakes. And he ended up saying that the biggest snake is Paul Heyman. Of course, the wise man, Paul Heyman. Jimmy ended up saying that Paul Heyman claims that for 40 years, he respected their family. You know what I'm saying? But how can Roman respect someone like Paul Heyman? Jay ended up saying now they will go to London and go to civil war with the bloodline. With just, you know, Roman and Sol Sokoa. Jay ended up saying that they are the biggest tag team in the world. You know what I'm saying? On July 1st in London at the O2, it's lockdown. So we had... Uh, so Solo and Roman, you know, Jay ended up saying, oh, welcome to the Uso Penitentiary to Sol Sokoa and the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. And pretty much that was basically how the segment ended. Well, Raw, I thought this was a good segment to open SmackDown tonight. You know, I like that uh, the Usos came out there, you know, talked about you know, family, and how family is supposed to lift each other up, and how family are supposed to have their backs, you know, and then I'm going on to say that they still love Roman because, you know, he's family, but for three years, they were in the trenches together, so it's leading up to a bloodline civil war at Money in the Bank uh, next Saturday. And then we had the first match of the night. As SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Rey Mysterio versus L.A. Knight. Yeah! And this was a good match here uh, between these two. L.A. Knight is over with the crowd. But then you got WWE piping in booze for L.A. Knight. And I don't know why they're piping in booze. You see how over L.A. Knight is, you know, with the crowd. So it was just stupid with the piped-in booze for L.A. Knight. So the match got underway. Knight delivered some right hands to Ray. He then slammed Ray into the turnbuckle. Knight then threw Ray to the ropes. Ray came back and kicked Knight in the face, and he threw him into the corner. Ray climbed up the second rope, he ended up hitting Knight with some right hands. Knight then lifted Ray up by his legs, but Ray ended up using his momentum with uh, Knight's legs. He ended up getting him leaning on the second rope. Ray then ended up hitting Knight with the 619, and Knight ended up falling to the outside, and then SmackDown with the commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Knight ended up throwing Ray into the ropes. But Ray ended up hitting Knight with a back elbow, which was followed up by a DDT. Ray went for the cover, and Knight kicked out. Ray then delivered a kick to the side of Knight's head, and Knight ended up falling onto the second rope. Ray then ended up going for the 619, but he was caught by Knight. Knight then lifted Ray up. Ray then landed on his feet. He then grabbed Knight, but Knight ended up flipping Ray. Ray ended up landing on his feet. And Knight ended up hitting Ray with the blunt force trauma. And Knight ended up going for the cover. And there you go. LA Knight ended up winning the match. Post-match, LA Knight, he tried to take Ray's mask off. And Santos Escobar ran down. And he ended up making the save as Knight ended up getting out of the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. Well, overall, this was a good match between uh, Ray and LA Knight here. Even though it was supposed to be uh, LA Knight versus Ray Mysterio versus Santos Escobar. But, you know, Vince McMahon made changes to the show tonight. This show 
felt like a Vince McMahon show. This was a Vince McMahon show from beginning to end. So then we went backstage. Sol Sico was walking with Paul Heyman. Rich Holland ended up passing by Sol Sikoa, And just Sikoa delivered the Simone Spike to Rich Holland. Rich Holland was selling the, the uh, Simone Spike uh, from Sol Sikoa. And he was just coughing, you know, trying to catch his trying to catch his breath and breathe. And so then walked away. Paul Heyman, of course, grabbed his phone. And of course, Paul Heyman was like, call Roman Reigns. And that was that. And then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Adam Pierce was backstage along with Sheamus. Both guys were checking on Ridge Holland. Pierce ended up asking a official to get Paul Heyman. Sheamus ended up saying, that's not good. That's not good enough. And then Sheamus walked away. Sheamus then ended up walking out into the arena. He ended up getting on the mic and he ended up challenging Sol Sokoa to a match later on in the night. There you go. That was the main event of SmackDown. Sheamus versus Sol Sokoa. And now we had the Women's Tag Team Championship and the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship on the line. The unification uh, match. And this match was just meh, in my opinion. We had Smiley Raquel sitting at ringside watching the match. So the match started off with Alba Fire and Shane Baszler. Both women delivered some right hands. Baszler then delivered some kicks to Fire. She ended up throwing Fire into the ropes, but Alba Fire delivered a back elbow to Shane Baszler. Isla Dawn then tagged in, and her and Alba Fire end up double teaming on Shane Baszler. Isla Dawn ended up going for the cover, but Baszler ended up kicking out. Rather than tagged in, she took a uh, Isla Dawn down, but Isla Dawn ended up kicking Ronda away. Alba Fire then got tagged back into the match, and once again, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn double teamed on Ronda. Alba Fire ended up going for the cover, and Ronda ended up kicking out. So Isla Dawn then knocked Shayna Baszler off the ring apron. Alba Fire delivered the Meteora onto Ronda. She ended up going for the cover. And Shayna Baszler broke up the pin. Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler end up fighting to the outside. Fire then delivered a kick onto Ronda's leg. And then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Ronda and Alba Fire were in the ring. Ronda locked in the ankle lock, but Fire ended up getting to her feet. She ended up kicking Ronda away. Shayna ended up taking in. She ended up hitting Isla Dawn with her right hand off the ring apron. Basil then ended up hitting fire with a knee to her face. She ended up going for the cover and Alba Fire kicked out. Alba Fire then ended up kicking Basil away and Isla Dawn ended up tagging in. Isla Dawn ended up knocking Ronda off the ring apron. Ronda Dan locked in the Carefuda clutch, but Alba Fire ended up delivering a swanton off the top rope, which broke up the Carefuda clutch on uh, Isla Dawn. Ronda got into the ring. As her and Alba Fire end up fighting to the outside. Isla Dawn then made the tag to Alba Fire. Ronda got into the ring. Ronda locked, Ronda locked in the armbar on Isla Dawn. And Shayna locked in the care for the clutch on Alba Fire. And both Alba Fire and Isla Dawn end up tapping out. So there you go. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler are your new unified women's WWE tag team champions. Obviously, of course. So post-match, Ronda got on the mic. She ended up asking Raquel, what is she doing here in the first place? So Raquel got on the mic. She ended up saying that she wants a rematch for the titles that we never lost. So Shayna asked Raquel, who is we? So then Al came Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan ended up returning. 
So both Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, and Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler were face to face. So it looks like the rematch might happen. You know, with Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez for the Unified Women's WWE Tag Team Championship. Obviously, Liv Morgan and Raquel aren't going to win it. So overall, just a very meh match, very predictable. We all knew the outcome of uh, the match, well, what it was going to be. And now we had the Grayson Waller effect. Man, Grayson Waller is doing his talk shows, but yet he hasn't had one fucking match since coming up to the main roster. Not one. We're getting, oh, Grayson Waller effect all the time. When is this guy going to have his first match on the main roster? It's like they see Grayson Waller as nothing but a talk show guy. So Grayson Waller welcomed pretty deadly on the Grayson Waller effect. Pretty cringe. Pretty awful. So pretty deadly end up saying that this is their favorite talk show. And that's much better than the KO show. So Waller end up saying that it's good to have people with good manners, as Americans don't have good manners. So Waller end up saying that they have been here for two months, that Pretty Deadly has been here for two months, and have so much success in the tag team division. Yeah, so much success, nobody gives a shit about Pretty Deadly. So, you have to say, next week in London, they face Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions. So, Pretty Deadly then end up calling London the best city, and they are taking this seriously. You have to say they don't feel like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are giving them the same kind of respect. So the fans end up chanting, shut up to them. And this whole segment was fucking awful. It was very, very bad. So Pretty Deadly ended up saying that they have won championships before. They ended up saying that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn can continue arguing with each other. But they have been on the same page. Pretty Deadly have been on the same page for the last three years. And will continue to be on the same page. To which Grayson Waller ended up saying he is not surprised. So we have to say that they should talk about last week. When Pretty Deadly were the Ironmen of the tag teams. So you have saying that they beat five of the best teams in all of WWE in one match in one night. And Grayson Waller called that inspiring. Pretty Deadly end up calling themselves the Iron Men of Friday Night SmackDown. Yeah, the Iron Men. Are you kidding me? So they have saying that they were times they did not think they could continue beating five teams. So they put over the other five tag teams. And they talked about how they beat them. So they mentioned, you know, the Street Profits. So out they came. And pretty much that was basically that. Overall, what a fucking awful segment this was. Very, very bad. We're pretty awful in this. And then we had Pretty Deadly versus the Street Profits. Match was terrible, in my opinion. Match uh, started with Montez Ford and Kit Wilson in the ring. Ford delivered some right hands, and Dawkins then ended up tagging in. So the Street Profits ended up double teaming on Wilson. Elton Prince then tagged in, and both uh, Prince and Wilson end up double teaming on Dawkins. Prince ended up going for the cover. And Dawkins kicked out. Prince then climbed the second rope. He ended up jumping off the second rope, but Dawkins delivered a right hand to Prince. Ford then tagged in. Ford delivered a chop to Prince's chest. Prince was then thrown to the outside of the ring. And then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, 
pretty deadly were in the ring. Both men were on the top rope. Ford then ended up falling onto Wilson. Dawkins and Prince were in the ring. Dawkins then delivered some right hands to Prince, which was followed up by a spin and elbow. Dawkins then delivered an underhook spin. He ended up going for the cover, and Prince kicked out. Dawkins then ended up lifting Prince up, and he tagged Montez Ford in. So the Prophets end up double teaming on Prince. Ford ended up going for the cover, and Wilson broke up the pin. Wilson was on the outside, and Dawkins delivered a show tackle. So Montez Ford then delivered the rock bottom to Prince, and then Dawkins ended up tagging in. Dawkins then lifted Prince up on his shoulders as Montez Ford climbed to the top rope. Kit Wilson ended up pushing Ford off the top rope. Dawkins got distracted. Prince ended up rolling Dawkins up. So there you go. Pretty deadly. Ended up winning the match. Match was terrible, in my opinion. And then we had Charlotte Flair versus Lacey Evans. Do I really need to say who won this match? If you said Charlotte Flair, ding, 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 you win nothing. Charlotte Flair locked in the figure four and bridged into the figure eight on Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans tapped out. There you go. Charlotte Flair ended up winning the match. Post-match, Charlotte Flair still locked in the uh, the figure four on Lacey Evans. Asuka ended up running into the ring. She ended up kicking Charlotte in the face. And pretty much that was that. Moving on. Adam Pierce. He was on his phone backstage. And in came Bianca Belair. Adam Pierce ended up asking uh, Bianca what will happen. If Asuka or Charlotte take a shot at her next week while she is at ringside. So Bianca ended up saying that she will defend herself. To which Adam Pierce ended up saying that Bianca should. And that is the problem. So Adam Pierce ended up saying to Bianca that she is banned from ringside. And that she needs to trust him. And he ended up saying that she will get the chance to challenge the winner after the match, face to face. So Bianca ended up shaking her head and she ended up leaving. So pretty much that was that. Main event. Sol Sokoa, accompanied by Paul Heyman, versus Sheamus. This was decent here. The match got on the way. Sheamus delivered some right hands to Sokoa. And then delivered an uppercut. Sokoa then delivered some right hands. But Sheamus uh, delivered some kicks to Sokoa. Sheamus ended up going for the broke kick early on Sokoa. But Sokoa ended up rolling to the outside. Sheamus went to the outside. He ended up hitting Sokoa with the clothesline. Sheamus then stomped on Sokoa's hand. He ended up throwing Sokoa back into the ring. Sheamus got into the ring. And Sokoa ended up kicking Sheamus. Solo then delivered a forearm to Sheamus' back. Sokoa then delivered a right hand to Sheamus as he slammed him into the corner. So Sokoa ended up running towards Sheamus, but Sheamus ended up kicking Sokoa in the face. Sheamus was on the top rope. He jumped off and he landed a clothesline onto Sokoa. So Sheamus ended up going for the cover and Sokoa ended up kicking out. Sheamus then delivered an elbow to Sokoa. And then some kicks. And then he followed up with a clothesline. Sheamus ended up getting Sokoa on the ring apron. Sheamus was on the ring apron as he lifted Sokoa up. But Sokoa landed on his feet. And he pushed Sheamus into the ring post. Sheamus then fell onto the outside. And Sokoa ended up delivering the Samoan drop to Sheamus. So then SmackDown went to commercial. So then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Sokoa ended up run towards Sheamus. Sheamus ended up hitting Sokoa with a clothesline. Both men got to their feet. Sheamus delivered another clothesline to Sokoa. Sheamus then lifted Sokoa up and he delivered a body slam onto him. Sheamus then delivered the Irish Curse Backbreaker and Sokoa ended up rolling onto the ring apron. Sheamus then grabbed Sokoa, ended up hitting Sokoa with the 10 beats of the bottom. 
Sheamus ended up going for the bro kick, but Sokoa came back and delivered a super kick to Sheamus. Sheamus leaned onto the ropes. He had pinned Sokoa with a knee to his face. So Sheamus ended up going for the cover, and Sokoa kicked out. Sheamus then lifted Sokoa up. He ended up pinning Sokoa with the white noise. He ended up going for the cover, and Sokoa ended up kicking out. Sheamus then ended up lifting Sokoa up, but Sokoa landed on his feet. He ended up kicking Sheamus. Sokoa then delivered the Samoan spike to Sheamus, and Sheamus fell to the outside of the ring. Sokoa went to the outside, and he slammed Sheamus onto the commentary table. Sokoa then placed Sheamus next to the barricade. Sokoa then ended up running and slammed into Sheamus, breaking the barricade. So Jessica Carr, who was the ref, she had checking on Sheamus, and then she called for the bell. So pretty much uh, the match ended in a no contest. So we had Jessica Carr end up calling for officials as Sokoa and Paul Heyman end up looking at Sheamus. Medic stand end up running down and Sokoa end up attacking uh, the medics. Out came the Usos. So the Usos end up hitting Sokoa with a super kick. And they end up hitting uh, Sokoa with the double super kick. So we had Sokoa end up going down. The Usos climbed to the top rope. And both uh, Jimmy and Jay end up hitting Sokoa with the Uso splash. And pretty much SmackDown went off the air. But overall, it was decent, you know, with uh, Sol Sokoa and Sheamus. But... You know, the end of the match, you know, neither guys could have took a loss here. But overall, SmackDown was absolutely terrible tonight. I'd say this was the worst SmackDown of the year, in my opinion. And then we move on to AW Rampage, which Rampage, I thought, was a very mid-show, in my opinion. but it was better than SmackDown, in my opinion. So we had Swerve Strickland and the United Empire, Will Ospreay, Kyle Fletcher, and Jeff Cobb. They ended up teaming up to take on Chaos. You know, this is Rocky Romero, Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, and Yao. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his name. This was sort of a rematch from the six-man tag, uh, which uh, took place last week on Rampage. But Yao and Swerve Strickland were added to uh, the match. And this was a pretty decent match here. So Trent Beretta slid out a suplex attempt from Kyle Fletcher. And he had taken him down with a half and a half suplex. Fletcher came back, delivered a body slam to Trent Beretta. Beretta and Rocky Romero end up catching Fletcher with a double high knee. So we had... Uh, Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta, they end up double teaming on Fletcher. So the best friends and Rocky Romero, they end up trying to give uh, the people what they wanted. Osprey took control of the match by giving Romero a tornado backbreaker. So Jeff Cobb ended up getting the tag and he got a big pop in the crowd. He took Rocky Romero down with a clothesline and then hit a standing moonsault to which he ended up going for the cover to which Romero ended up kicking out. So as Rampage came back from the commercial, Yao squared off with Will Ospreay and we had uh, Yao end up delivering a chop to Ospreay. Will Ospreay ended up hitting a corkscrew kick and we had uh, Chaos end up gaining up on Will Ospreay. Yao ended up hitting a Falcon Arrow on Ospreay, to which he ended up going for the cover, and Ospreay ended up kicking out. Swerve Strickland took out Rocky Romero, and we had uh, Will Ospreay and Jeff Cobb, Kyle Fletcher. They ended up gaining up on Yao in the ring. Ospreay ended up, hit, end up hitting the Hidden Blade on Yao, and he ended up going for the cover. So there you go. Swerve Strickland and... And also, United Empire 
ended up winning the match. Overall, it was a decent match. Will Ospreay, awesome in the ring, of course. And, of course, he's taking on Kenny Omega uh, Sunday at Forbidden Door for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. So very much uh, looking forward to the match. And then we had Tony Storm. Tony Storm was with uh, Soraya and Ruby Soho. Tony Storm promised that the New Japan Strong Women's Champion, Will Nightingale, would bend her over and make her humble in their match on Sunday. Tony Storm is saying that her title is the only title on the line in the match because hers is the only one that matters. Pretty much that was basically what Tony Storm had to say. But I think that's going to be uh, one of the weakest matches on the card. I mean, obviously Tony Storm is going to win the match, retain the Women's World Championship. And then we had Adam Cole, baby! Adam Cole came down to the ring and, you know, he did his whole... You know, entrance, you know, with the boom. And then as he was ready to go for Adam Cole, baby, he was interrupted by MGF, which this was MGF's first ever appearance on Rampage. So MGF got on the mic. He kept saying that he's so thankful that Adam Cole encouraged him to take the match with Hiroshi Tanahashi for Forbidden Door this Sunday, where the AW World Championship will be on the line. So, MGF ended up saying that he got Adam Cole a match with filthy Tom Lawler for Forbidden Door. So, we had uh, Tom Lawler and Royce Isaacs. They were in the ring. They ended up attacking Adam Cole. And I'm not familiar with uh, Tom Lawler. He was an MMA fighter turned pro wrestler. And... MGF took his time getting into the ring. He was going to run off uh, Tom Lawler and also Royce Isaacs. But as soon as MGF got into the ring, uh, Tom Lawler and Royce Isaacs end up getting out. And pretty much that was basically that. Yeah, so we're going to see MGF versus Hiroshi Tanahashi Sunday at Forbidden Door, where the AEW World Championship is going to be on the line. Obviously, MJF is going to retain. Of course, MJF is not losing that title anytime soon. Adam Cole taking on Tom Lawler. Adam Cole will probably win that match. And then we had the acclaimed and Billy Gunn. They defeated these three uh, local talents. This was a nothing match here. So the acclaimed and Billy Gunn you know, won the match. Post-match, Harley Cameron, you know, she was with uh, QT Marshall, you know, part of QTV. She ended up coming out with two with two guys who were flanked in masks and hoodies. And the crowd there in Chicago was booing the hell out of Harley Cameron. And Harley Cameron, she was just fucking awful on the mic. She was absolutely terrible. So, the Chicago crowd was booing the hell out of her. She got the Don Callis treatment here. So, Harley Cameron wanted to sing with the acclaimed. She was trying to sing for them, which was fucking terrible. It's like she's gonna, she wants to be the next Jillian Hall. If you remember Jillian Hall, you know, when she was in WWE. So, Billy Gunn cut Harley Cameron off. Harley Cameron ended up trying to impress the acclaimed, the acclaimed with her rap skills. And then she was kind of flirting with Anthony Bowens. So Bowens ended up asking Harley Cameron if she's been kicked in the head too many times by a kangaroo. Because, of course, Anthony Bowens is gay. So that drew a big pop from the crowd. And you had Harley Cameron with her rap skills. It, it was fucking cringe. 
So QT Marshall ended up coming out, and he ended up distracting the acclaimed, and one of the men unmasked himself, and it was John Morrison, or uh, John T Johnny TV, as what he was being called. So Giant TV took out Billy Gunn with a super kick, and pretty much that was basically that. So John Johnny TV is now part of QTV with QT Marshall and his cringe you know, guys there. What a train wreck of a segment this was. This was a clusterfuck of a segment. Absolutely awful. And then we had Sky Blue versus Anna J. This was a match to advance in the first round of the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. And this was a solid uh, women's match here. So Anna J ended up dropping Sky Blue with a DT on the floor. And Sky Blue ended up making the comeback in the match after Rampage came back from the commercial. Sky Blue came off the top with a cross body to Anna J. She ended up going for the cover, and Anna J ended up kicking out. Anna J ended up hitting a backstabber for a near fall, and Sky Blue ended up hitting the code blue on Anna J, and she ended up getting the win. So there you go. Sky Blue won the match. She advances in the first round of the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. So that was that. Solid match it was. Main event, Jungle Boy versus Doki. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his name. And Doki was accompanied by Yushinobu, Yushinobu or Yushinobu Kanemura. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his name. But this was an okay uh, main event match here. So the match started off with Doki and the dumping uh, Jungle Boy to the floor. And he delivered a tope to Jungle Boy. Doki then ended up chopping Jungle Boy around ringside. So we had Jungle Boy end up whipping Doki into the ring, uh, into the barricade, and he had back suplexing him onto the ring apron. So then as Rampage came back from the commercial, Doki ended up catching Jungle Boy with a flying forearm and then a double stomp. Doki ended up giving Jungle Boy a power bomb out of a backslide for a near fall because Jungle Boy kicked out. Jungle Boy ended up coming back with a Tiger Driver and he ended up going for the cover to which Doki kicked out. Doki then ended up rolling to the floor. Jungle Boy ended up setting up the timekeeper's table and he ended up going for a power bomb to Doki, but Doki ended up escaping and he took out Jungle Boy with a own uh, power bomb driver through the table. So Doki ended up putting Jungle Boy through the table. So the crowd got behind Doki here. And the crowd started booing Jungle Boy. So this is all possibly set up for Jungle Boy to turn heel, which that will possibly happen Sunday at Forbidden Door. Because AW uh, has plans to turn Jungle Boy heel. So Doki ended up getting a brain buster for a near fall. And then he ended up pinning a springboard into a DET to Jungle Boy, which Jungle Boy ended up kicking out. So Jungle Boy came back and delivered a super kick to Doki, and then he ended up hitting a Poison Rana. Jungle Boy ended up hitting a Sly and Elbow Strike, and then he ended up locking Doki in the Skull N, which is Sonata's finisher, to which uh, Jungle Boy is facing Sonata Sunday at Forbidden Door. So Doki ended up tapping out, and Jungle Boy ended up winning the match. The crowd uh, stopped booing Jungle Boy, and they were singing along to Tarzan Boy. And then post-match, Sonata ended up coming out. Sonata was dressed in a suit. He had the IWGP World Championship over his shoulder. He came down to the ring. He ended up having a stare down with Jungle Boy. And that was how Rampage went off the air. Overall, it was an okay main event. But Rampage 
you know, was a mid show in my opinion, but it was better than SmackDown in my opinion. But anyways, that's it for the SmackDown and AW Rampage review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my review of Phantom of the Paradise if you guys haven't seen it. Also, my live video that I did last night. So check out those videos. And I'll see you all later.